Hi, in this episode I'll be talking to James Rogers, the head man at Raid UK and Malta. Over a brew we talk about how Raid has become one of the mainstream dive agencies leading the way in e-learning and offer training covering 150 different courses for free. Do you fancy a brew? How are you doing? Yeah, I'm not bad mate, thanks for coming on. Yeah, it's interesting what you're saying about um, these guys from uh, the 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 Ant Middleton sort of SAS, whatever it's called, um, because I think they did some free diving recently with Emma Farrell. I think that they 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 did a course and and uh, she 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 was quite impressed with them, not only because they had good crack about them, but yeah. Um, you know they're they're fit lads and 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 she quite she quite she quite enjoyed the sort of combination of the way that they could execute uh, within the free diving disciplines itself as well yeah. as the the banter that went on you know yeah um, so James from Raid welcome to Fancy a Brew podcast if you give us a little bit of an Thank introduction you. to yourself let everyone know who okay. you are but not too many spoilers because obviously we've got loads to discuss right. over the next hour right. and uh, more most importantly have you got a brew. Well, uh, I, I, I've got some water in a cup. I know it's not really a cup of tea, but I was a bit, I was a bit hurried sorting everything out. But let me let me start by saying thanks, Andy, for having me on. It's great no to, to 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 have the chance to chat to you for the first time and uh, be be welcome to your podcast. Uh, I'm James Rogers. I'm uh, the director of Raid UK Limited, which is a a franchise office of uh, the the Raid. Uh, diver training agency so I'm one of about 20 global offices uh, and I look after a little global patch including the the UK, Ireland uh, and Malta uh, and a couple of Scandinavian countries and, and, and things as a territory so so that's really who I am. Uh, I've been in the industry for about 30 years and uh, I'm, uh, I'm running with some uh, some support, some staff members, which I'll talk about later on, uh, a, a, a regional office to help people learn about RAID and get diving. When was RAID founded? A lot of people are hearing about us recently because we've 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 stepped up our, our, our sort of marketing and communication, but we're not that new. Um, we're, we're, we were founded in uh, 2006 originally. Yeah, doing some investigation. The name Raid actually stands for something much like Paddy and BSAC and all the others, doesn't it? So the the Rebreather um, Association of International Divers. So is that really what instigated it? The, the more technical aspect, because that comes across in you in mm-hmm. all your training courses. Uh, yeah, yeah. I guess um, we were we were certainly born as the uh, Rebreather Association of International Divers as Raid. Um, because we were the first agency that took uh, rebreather diving uh, into the recreational diver training market. Right. So uh, that was where we started. And since then, we've become full spectrum. So we deal with scuba, tech, and free divers disciplines as well. So we're not just about rebreathers anymore, but our kind of uh, original or, 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 or core programs was a more technical orientation. Yeah, the raid training I've done seems to be quite heavily focused initially on the the sort of mental aspects of diving. You know, the, not so much the theory, but like the the psychology of the dive and and mm-hmm. of the diver, the mindset. That's probably the, the word I'm looking for. Is that mm-hmm. is that perhaps a raid philosophy, or is it more of a uh, an instructor, particular, you know, speciality that yeah. he came. Uh, I yeah, look, I I I I'm, I I think that's really about instructing in general. You could you could speak to a lot of guys in a lot of different agencies. Um, you know, the 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 guys and girls would all come back to the fact that it's about understanding the person in front of you and and dealing with their mindset to get them diving well and to give them an enjoyable experience. Yeah. Uh, a very a very wise man many moons ago said to me the only thing that makes diving difficult is someone's mind. Yeah, certainly. Yeah. It, 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 I did uh, the side mount course, and yeah. the, like the first day, just seemed to, in, in in certainly the best way, I was left at the end of it going, "Wow, I've 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 kind of everything I've done so far up to this point has been questioned, and I've perhaps come up with an alternative answer now, which." 
has made me perhaps a better diver in in the the way that I'm going to think about things. So that philosophy, it's all saying that, don't I? that sort of mindset was was, was a massive eye opener to me. I, I quite enjoyed that part of the course. Yeah, well, look, we're just wanting people to be honest with themselves, really. I, I you know, from from my standpoint, I've been diving for a lot of years, and I I, I thought I was okay, if not better than okay in my opinion um and 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 really i i had a bit of a rude awakening when i when when i joined raid and 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 got involved with the agency because i i i was around people who who just highlighted um areas that i could improve very quickly and or areas that i'm still working on today and you're always you're always learning um you never you're never really um, that per- perfection is is unachievable within the sport. There's always something to tweak, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. So taking it back then, so where did you start diving? What what's the script? Uh, okay, um, I was uh, before the first Gulf War. I was sort of to uh, 1990. I was in Israel. And uh, I found myself uh, working on the boats in Elat and uh, uh, Israeli military took me for a try dive and I came back to the UK and immediately signed up for a course. I remember walking into current state diving uh, on Kellaway Avenue in Bristol back in the day and uh, chatting to Richard Ball, who we may know from the BBC sort of uh, times now and, and his work with uh, ocean air masks and things like that. But he was running, um, he was running current state diving and um, it was literally one of the first paddy courses that they had run at the, at the dive centre. They had just switched from BZAC to paddy. And if I'd walked in the week before, I would have been doing a BZAC course and I walked in when I did and I, I did a, a, a paddy course and from there I just fell in love with it in between playing rugby um, and, and diving. They were my two major hobbies and uh, I guess this was before we had all the nonsense of Netflix and the internet and all this sort of distraction. We could just have a, have a hobby and do it every weekend and, and I was either playing rugby or I was scuba diving depending on the time of year and injuries and things. And uh, I just I just loved it. I you know we used to do trips. We used to do uh, Wednesday night um, um, uh, night dive trips of driving from Bristol down to Weymouth and jumping in at Chesil and doing doing dives and going away weekends over to uh, you know further flung locations down into uh, down into Cornwall maybe or up into Wales and things like that. So whenever they were running trips, I was one of their sort of active divers, and then I just got more and more involved. And uh, I had the opportunity to uh, manage the place, and uh, he said there's a job going at Paddy, and I just I just went for the job at, at, at Paddy and fell fell into a position at, at Paddy International Limited at the time before it became Paddy EMEA. How did you end up at Raid from that? Well, I, I spent 20 years at Paddy doing various various things, and 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 you know it was a massive sort of growth time for the industry and. And um, I, I worked for Paddy for 20 years, and and then there were some uh, redundancies. I was part of the redundancies, and I kind of fell out of um, my Paddy career, and thought, oh, "Crikey, what am I going to do? I better, uh, I better think about this seriously." And uh, some people came knocking at my door about raid. The nice kind of people, yeah, right? as please. in there were there were people within the industry who yeah. were going through some transition at the time too. I don't know. Uh, how much detail you, you you would like to know, really? But you know, the, it, it was it was yeah, 2012, 2013. There was a bit of transition going on with um, SSI, um, uh, Mares, um, uh, the head group buying SSI, and and um, putting their their own distrib- distribution structure into place. And because of that that changed. There were some people disenfranchised as a result, and those people um, migrated to RAID as a, as a, as a preference. They, they felt RAID was a good choice for them. And yeah. so RAID took new ownership, um, took on a, a couple of new owners, Paul Toomer and, and Jim Holiday, and uh, I joined at that time. So I was one of the first uh, regional officers to join the sort of the, 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 the second or the first rebirth of of, of the raid brand 
uh, back in 2013. Has it evolved much since you took it on? Oh, yeah. Yeah, everything's changed. <laughs> Everything so the whole, the whole, the whole, the whole, uh, the whole system from top to bottom has yeah. has has is constantly under review and change. Or as a as a as a dynamic online agency, we never stop. We never stop. I mean, I've just been on calls today with massive launches planned for for our for our for our product. You know, new yeah. um, new uh, instructor development, new instructor training materials, new systems, new yeah, it's. There's, there's always, always um, a whole pipeline full of projects going on. Yeah. Would you say that that is like the whole industry has evolved as well at the same time? Or have you perhaps in some respects been more in the lead? You seem to have stepped your game up slightly. You know, you, your online learning's already done. You, you're more technically orientated from day one. Yeah, I guess I guess when, 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 when the company was formed back in 2006, um, it was a commercial decision and, and quite a risky one at the time to just be digitally based, have no hard product at all yeah. was, 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 was quite a decision, but it was based on sound business sense and that's been borne out. And the further we go along and the clock ticks, uh, we see that everyone is migrating towards digital product for obvious reasons. You know, it's a, uh, there's an environmental issue. There's a, there's a logistical issue with freight and warehousing and staff and all this kind of stuff. So, so we, we were well placed and lucky to some degree. Um, and, and others have followed us, but it's helped the whole industry move. To answer your question specifically, I think, I think, uh, the whole industry is, is moving at a rapid rate of knots and, it, and it's moved a lot in the last decade, uh, yeah. for sure. How much sort of detrimental activities gone on? With, with all this COVID that's happened this year for you, with, as a business, do you think? Oh, yeah, it's been an absolute mess of a year. There's no, there's no point sugarcoating it from, a, from an industry that's based around travel domestically and international travel. Having, having travel restrictions, both domestic and internationally, is, has, has crippled the industry. Certainly we as Ray, speaking for uh, Ollie Van Overbeek, my, my training manager as well, we use this definition of inland sites quite a lot. Um, they are... They are for the industry. I mean, firstly, where would we be as industry without inland sites? I mean, yeah. with, the, with the weather and the, the logistical implications we have of diver training, um, we, we, would, we would be a lot further back without having these options to dive uh, inland at these great sites. But we, 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 we like to think of them as, as kind of like, like a gym for you as a diver. You yeah. go there to, to test yourself and to put yourself through skills and drills and for fun and, and for your, your own fitness levels. But, but predominantly they are, they are there for you to dive at in preparation for going away and doing the real thing. Mm, so hard work, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Hard work when they're just yeah. not available though, isn't it? Oh, it's a mess. Yeah. Absolute mess. And then these guys have worked their, their, their tails off to um, meet the, the guidelines and the restrictions and everything I hear from them is that there's, there's not been any cases at these sites, there's nothing no. to show that it's unsafe, you're outdoors you're covered in PPE you're not, <laughs> you're underwater <laughs> you know, yeah. how safe do you need to be and I think, I think as, a, as, a, as a nation and a, and a world we, we have to be a little bit careful not to mitigate the risk out of everything we do um, uh, it's just crazy to 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 try and go through life doing things that just don't have any risk involved to them. We want choice, and yeah. if we want to climb a very steep mountain uh, with with with, uh, with 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 a friend and 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 with uh, uh, sort of ropes and various other uh, safety equipment, that's dangerous. But we make the decision to do it, and I think there's an element of that within scuba diving as well, which yeah. is let's not. Let's not uh, try and make something that can't be made completely safe. Completely yeah. safe. I mean, I do like that, that idea of creating your own risk assessment. And, and if I was living near the water's edge, you know, on the coast, I'd be going diving this afternoon, wouldn't I? Which is no less dangerous yeah. than, than going diving at a quarry, other than I have to yeah. pay someone when I get there. But Well, I'll, 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 I'll caveat that with we have to also... Pay attention to the law and 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 not put ourselves into a situation yeah. where we're we're turning up at a a small little fishing village on the south coast somewhere where they don't want people from from the city coming down and and maybe bringing in the the, the virus. So we're living in unprecedented times, mm. 
And I think we just have to apply a huge amount of common sense, but also within that as a dive industry, um, appreciate that we we love the sport and we will we will do it. We'll find a way to do it. We just need to be um, sensible with the application. Yeah. Do, do raids sit on the BDSE? Yes, yes, we do. Yeah, very good uh, committee group, the British Diving Safety Group, very pleased to be part of that. Um, there are several within the UK. There's uh, also uh, CETA, uh, the Scuba Industry Trade Association, which has been going for, 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 for a lot of years. Um, and um, we're, we're, we're pleased to have a connection to, to, to these groups. It's a great way for the dive industry to, to get together regularly and to um, make sure we're all pulling in the same direction. Is that something you do or someone within your office, within the business? Do you get involved personally? No, um, it's something that I, 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 I share the workload with. We've got an international training director, but he's over in Canada. But the, the president of RAID, uh, Paul Toomer, uh, is based in London. And, and obviously with lockdown, he's, he's not been able to travel internationally the way he normally does. Mm. So I've been quite fortunate with his involvement in uh, what I class as sort of raid uk business domestic business and uh, he would he would jump on various calls with me with committee groups and uh, we share the work between the the two of us but also um ollie van overbeek who is um he runs a dive center uh, dive life in manchester but he also contracts to me for for several hours a week um to to help me from a training side because I'm not uh, I'm not diving as much as I used to with other commitments, both both work and family. Um, I I need someone who's um, diving uh, and really feeling um, that side of the business from a training side. So it's a it's a nice balance. When I, I had Ollie on a couple of episodes ago, maybe two or three oh, weeks he ago, got there before me, did he? Oh, he right. did, mate. He he snaked in there, but I definitely got that yeah. feel from from Ollie that he was. He was quite passionate about getting training materials in a particular way and a format that that read well and was good, you know, for the, yeah. the student, you know. So it's not surprising yeah. you've got him doing that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, he he works uh, for for Raid UK as a training manager, so he'll yeah. deal with any sort of training questions that I want to get him involved with. He, he he's also writing for Raid International, as he as he said during his uh, his his work with you on the podcast. He's yeah. He's, he's written a lot of programs for us and part of our writing team, which is, is full of very experienced um, industry names, which is great. Sorry to interrupt this episode to drop another plug for my Patreon account, but I do spend several hours on each episode in the search for new guests, the recording, the post-production, the advertising, and sometimes days on my YouTube videos. So to help me keep up with its production and the frequency of releases, I'm asking for you to become a sponsor on Patreon of the Are You A Scooby Diver Fancy A Brew podcast. When you become a supporter, not only will you have my undying appreciation for helping to support the podcast, but you'll be able to take advantage of some of the many tiered benefits that come with it, some of which includes official merchandise. If you'd like to become a patron, go to www.patreon.com forward slash Fancy A Brew. There you'll see all the many levels of subscription and how to join the Fancy A Brew community. So without further ado, let's get back to this episode. When I was looking for your internet page, I saw this thing about free e-learning, wasn't it? So what can you tell us about that? Uh, okay, uh, free free learning is uh, a, a RAID marketing initiative that we've launched fairly recently. It uh, is an extension of uh, what we had within the system originally, which was a preview course. So when you um, did a course, you would get... Um, uh, 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 another course gifted to you, as in you did an open water 20 course, you might get the advanced 30, 35 course. And when we say a, a gift course, we mean the academics uh, only, not the actual, you don't get the full course, you don't walk into a dive centre and negotiate a discount based on the fact you've got the, <laughs> the, the, the gift course. It's just a knowledge transfer, it's just a marketing way to get people reading and, and, and studying and, and finding out about new types of uh, uh, courses and, and equipment disciplines and things. So we've extended that into and remarketed, rebranded it under free learning. And that means that the whole system, uh, both for scuba, including rebreathers uh, and free diving, are now opened 
uh, up for free learning, which means that when you register on our program as a new diver uh, from, from anywhere you want, from any agency, any, any non-divers, anyone who wants to register as an experienced diver or instructor, you get a profile, you log into that profile for the first time, and you'll see a great big panel of hundreds of different courses that you can dive into and start to enjoy based on your preferences. So it's a, it's a great way for us to introduce you to the, the, the suite of RAID product uh, and uh, for us to entice you to our trainers and to our dive centers for the application of those courses uh, involving their great tuition and the water work. So, so get this right, I can go on to your website now, register as a diver, and then go and read about I don't know, Trimix, about rebreathers, whatever, and it doesn't cost me anything. Yep. No way. Absolutely right. That's crazy. I'm, right. I'm on there this afternoon then. I have nothing to do. It's raining. Yeah. I'm going, going reading about normoxic trimix. Yeah, yeah so uh, just uh, everyone, get off Netflix, uh, get get moving around, get working on your fitness and get working, exercising your brain as well and get on to free learning and, and do some do some uh, uh, learning on uh, on the different uh, adventures that you can have within the sport on uh, these different disciplines of uh, equipment, but everything everything from uh, uh, rebreather stuff to technical stuff to you know uh, wreck diving through through the whole spectrum. Everything's there for you. As soon as as soon as you buy the course, then that course disappears from your suite of free learning options. But um, they're they're all there for you to enjoy. How many is there off the top of your head? If we count uh, the free learning platform as well, over 150 different courses are Jeez. open and uh, freely available for for your free learning. Yeah. So if people say nothing good came of 2020, well now you can go to Ray's website, you can learn 150 different courses and then have something to look forward to as soon as perhaps the new year and all this vaccination is squared away. And, and actually start looking at a course to further your, your sort of dive career or yeah. dive journey, couldn't you? And one, one important element of that that I've got to mention so far is once you've done the quizzes from the course that you've selected. So so let's say you're a non-dive and you go, right, I've always wanted to learn to dive. I'm going to do the Raid Open Water 20 course. You go on to the Raid Open Water 20 course and you do the various chapters. Uh, I think there's about... Tenth within the uh, uh, Open Water 20 program. Each of those have a little quiz at the end of each section. Once you've done that quiz and then you sign up through a dive centre to do the full course, all that academic work is imported into the full program. So you don't have to do it again. The instructor will gauge your mastery and understanding and make sure the knowledge transfer has taken place of that information and reinforce everything that needs reinforcing. But once you've learned it, you've learned it. Let's not over teach this let's not waste time let's get you diving yeah i do like that I, that was one thing that i did i was highlighted when i was reading through your your website it was more about why you did the the online learning initially is to get when we are when we are training get more time in the water rather than time in the classroom time at the lakeside just get in the water and get diving really so i, I do like that idea of training just getting amongst it well, looking through your platform earlier Obviously, the courses in, in, in whatever agency, really, they've all got the same sort of end goal, haven't they? We're all trying to get to a different depth with a different gas, with a different set of equipment, etc. But what's becoming more and more popular now is the free diving element in it, which mm -hmm. obviously you're running a course now for that, which is kind of yeah, how we yeah, we, we're, we're, in touch. Yeah, we're going, yeah, exactly. I think, I think free diving's fabulous. I've only done the one programme uh, myself. Um, the sort of entry level free diver program um, with Emma Farrell down in uh, Fobster. Uh, and uh, as a Bristol boy now living in Durham, it was quite nice to get back to the southwest and and uh, yeah, and jump in with her and and do the course. But I also also did it with my uh, my my daughter who was uh, nineteen, I think, at the time. So uh, that that was great sort of uh, dad and daughter time to to do that program with her. But it's 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 great, isn't it? It's ease of access. It's it, it's it's less faffage than you get maybe within technical diving and, and scuba diving, yeah. uh, less gear. Um, but also, uh, it's it's competitive. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. it's got a competitive nature. That did dives. she beat you? Uh, we, Is that what you're saying? Did she beat you? 
I'm not. I'm not going to say. <laughs> You've gone slightly red to a suggestion. Yes. <laughs> I've gone slightly red because I've got this. I've got this. I've got this jacket on. It's about 100 degrees in. But, uh, I know. Um, I thought I'd lo- I thought I'd logo up, but I've got double logo on. But I, nice. I am. I am cooking in here for some reason. The, the heating has gone berserk. But anyway, um, you look. Let, let, let's just say she did very well. <laughs> Tongue in cheek. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Talk me through that yeah. course because it, it is something that quite interests me. Could you t- could you tell elaborate on yeah. it, how it went? Okay, yeah, okay. Um, the the course is quite similar to maybe a, a open water course structure if people are divers and I'm talking to them as people who might be interested in free diving. So again, with the RAID system, you can register on the RAID system. You can get free materials with our free learning platform, so you can go on and you can self study. Uh, before you commit to the program and then you commit to the program through a trainer we've got um, several trainers um, Emma being down in uh, Bath at uh, training out of Fobster but we've also got Steve Millard uh, apnea apnea freediving up in the Manchester area as well so we've got two instructor trainers they run courses that you sign up on and once you sign up on those courses uh, you get given the full training materials, which gives you access to the full program, which allows instructors to be allocated to you as a student. You then work as a as a pairing, so you will be instructed by the instructor through the program, um, which involves your academic work, pool work, and open water work in the same way as a standard scuba uh, yeah. course. Um, various skills and drills and fun and, and laughter will be had and you meet the performance objectives to the, the instructor's satisfaction and the dive centre checks the instructor's done everything right and and signs you off and you're certified. You basically have a have a depth requirement that you have to meet but surprisingly within free diving it's, it's incredibly technical the breathing techniques and the elements of it so it's not yeah. to be thought of as just a turn up and pass kind of course it really isn't you have to you have to work um is uh, is the amount of um equalization issues that people have because of the um the depths uh and the, the pressure changes it, it catches a lot of people out being able to get to the depths even if they have great uh, breath hold capabilities it's equalization that catches a lot of people out of and that. stops them stops them from completing the course so i think i think the fallout rate is is, is about 25 percent from our statistics yeah. of people who sign up for the course but then that's just a, a case of you know continuing to to learn and to find personally what techniques you can apply and there's various different equalization techniques to 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 get you through the uh uh, the water column to the depths needed yeah do you think you're going to progress on that or is it more of a let's go and have a look we haven't got this course ourselves so i'm probably promoting another agency now which may not be that smart business but i'll do it anyway is is spearfishing i think it's a very environmental uh, way to fish you know very selective yeah. you have to identify species and size and it applies the the techniques of free diving in an application that would really interest me although i enjoy free diving uh, i'll have to work quite hard at it um to be at a level that i was comfortable to to do it and particularly um, spear fishing i'll have to do a lot of work um to to do it it's um it's it's like everything you know you have to you have to commit a little bit of time and effort to it to be good at it mm. So what have you got next? What have you got, you personally, have you got planned any dives that you can plan <laughs> in this crazy time? Yeah. No, no. Oh, I mean, it's, it's just kind of official through the company at the moment. You know, diving uh, is, is on hold at the moment because we're already at the end of the, at the, end of the year. We've cancelled a whole range of training programmes and, and expeditions and things that we need to catch up on. So uh, it's all about pushing for the end of the year, rescheduling, uh, a lot of stuff that we've missed and and, uh, and getting back and visiting dive centres as quickly as possible for me. Uh, unfortunately, my, my life doesn't involve going off to um, Mozambique for three weeks and, and trucking around finding new dive locations or, or going off with the South African uh, underwater her- heritage units and, and diving on uh, on uh, protected wreck sites, uh, as I have in the in the past, you know, it's a, a very different lifestyle now, in regard to um, sat in front of a computer screen doing the <laughs> job. Sadly, 
I bet though, on balance, they have different amounts of benefit for yourself, as in enjoyment in different respects, don't they? Well, look, I mean, I've, I've been doing it for 30 years, so I, I have to love it. Otherwise, I wouldn't still be doing it. You know, <laughs> I can't be this mad. I surely can't be this mad just just to just to just to do it for the sake of doing it. No, I, I absolutely love it. I love the people. I love the I love the sport. Um, you know, I am lucky in that I'm sure we'll be able to squeeze in a few trips um, once uh, travel restrictions lighten up um, and call it work, which is pretty lucky. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, uh, things will uh, start to loosen up at least with the vaccination uh, mm. news coming through and the big push will. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll hope that uh, everyone starts to see the benefits soon. Well, you have an idea. Have you had anything to do with these the digital shows, dive shows? Yeah. Have you had anything to do with them? Yeah, Scuba Digital, yeah, we got involved in that. Again, it's, it, it's, it's pretty hard, isn't it? It's not like the real thing. No. Um, but we have to adapt. And I think credit to the, the guys and, and girls involved in, in, in pushing to at least give us some platforms to continue to promote the industry on. So, um, yeah, we'll continue to support, um, you know, as much as we, we can within reason. I mean, my, my, my wife, my wife works in, um, in audio digital events and, and, and things. And, and that, that industry in particular has been very heavily affected by the virus, you know, the, all the technicians out of work and then having to switch everything to digital. So, Digital shows, um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how they go. It's going to take a little bit of time for people to uh, get used to them. I think. Yeah. What sort of platforms do you use? We've got uh, a YouTube account. It's a very good place to go and and see our skill circuit. So if you know if you're a diver from any any flavor agency, as I say, we don't we don't we we want everyone to you know we're very inclusive as an agency to go and. Go and tune in to uh, Ray TV on YouTube and watch the skill circuits that we have. There's technical skill circuits. There's um, recreational circuits. There's, you know, we we, we favour a long hose configuration for for you guys that uh, understand what I'm talking about. Um, you know, we like um, a, a recreational uh, primary donate configuration, a Hogarthian configuration on our regulators, but we don't we don't mandate it. So a lot of our skill circuits or all of our skill circuits will have a an option to watch it on a long hose drill or a or a short hose drill. But we've got uh, I think I think I looked fairly recently and we had something like sixty thousand views on uh, on 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 selected skill circuit videos so we're doing we're doing quite well with some of that um we we use um uh instagram now we're very tuned into instagram as an agency working with our two we've got two marketing consultants who work within the company as well so a bit of a shout out to james little and uh natalie sidebottom who uh who do uh, a great job at uh, working to uh keep us uh uh, up to date and moving with our communications across the board. So uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all the usual suspects. But uh, uh, in internally, Zoom, the platform we're on now, has been very good for us and I think good for everyone to deliver um, uh, digital training options or dry, dry course offerings. Um, and we've got a, a, a system called Slack, which is uh, a kind of internal sort of, I, I would call it sort of intranet site, but it's probably called something else now in regard <laughs> to a, a, way, a way for internal, internal communications to be done just to cut down on the, on the volume of dreaded emails that fly around in a modern business. You know, yeah. it's crazy, isn't it? So, so Slack internally and, and, and the, uh, the platforms I've already mentioned keep us... Uh, pretty well up, up to date with uh, with everything. I do wonder how much the world has moved on in this last sort of eight months because we've all changed how we do things. Like before, like you said, you did, you just sent an email, but now you can go on that Slack or Zoom and just have a quick chat. And and it's so much nicer to have that face-to-face, -face, isn't it? Even though you can't actually 
be in the same location. Yeah, instant messaging, just great. I mean, just just setting up WhatsApp groups for little projects and using all this kind of stuff is just so cool now, isn't it? It's mm-hmm. it's come a long way in my day. I'm 52 now, so when I went to school, we 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 were still typing away on typewriters in uh, in in classes rather than PCs, you know. Yeah. So, is there anything that, that I've not thought of or that we've not talked about that you'd like to? No, really. I just wanted to have a have a chat with you, and thanks for having me on. It's it's nice. just just nice to be thrown into the mix and and for let let a few people know about raid. So when Natalie said, you know, do you want to get James on? It was like absolutely I do because pushing the ethos that I enjoy, the long coast configuration, the the sort of getting into the psyche of a diver. That's how I see raid for me. Uh, mm-hmm. Is the agency I'd like to be more involved with. Yeah, good. So, well, thank you for that. Yeah, we're not. We're not saying we're better than anyone else, but no. we're we're pushing we're pushing hard to try and be. I think that's a definition that make makes some sense to me. You know, there's great divers within every agency, um, and uh, you know we we have to focus on ourselves, and we have learned over a, a long period of time to select the elements that we've liked in our you know pre you know our our, our careers prior to joining Ray. And then we've developed an agency that we, as instructors and, and instructor trainers, uh, industry professionals, whatever term you want to use, would really like to use, if if we are, and, and most of us are still, doing training ourselves. So it's 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 something we stand by, and um, it's it's we're very agile. You know, we 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 have we're, we're moving so quickly with. Uh, adapting to COVID and adapting to the situations that we're in regarding new gear and, and techniques within the sport. And we look around people diving now and we look around how they how they spoke and how they acted and how they dive now. And we just see that it's been a real, real positive step forward in the last 10 years regarding um, scuba diving and its application across all agencies. It's, it's uh, we're very, very proud of our involvement in it. You know, go and go and visit uh, diveray.com and go and look at our international blog site, which is um, my old UK blog site now rebranded international. So diveraiduk.com for the for the blog site. And um, you know, if there's questions, get in touch. As simple as that. So, yeah. <laughs> well, nice one. Thanks for coming on, James. I, I do appreciate you giving up a bit of your afternoon today. Are you still teaching the kids from home and that, or what's the script? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just the one kid in this house. Um, we, uh, my six-year-old boy, is home from school because of a COVID outbreak, like so many people oh. in the world. And uh, yeah, I am uh, keeping him entertained with his uh, schoolwork as well as. Me and the wife uh, working in our home offices. Me downstairs and her upstairs. Is it? Is it been pretty hard? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can I can just about handle year two maths still, so I'm all right. But um, yeah, it is it is it is hard keeping up with it all. You know, kids are kids. They they uh, they they can be very demanding, but uh, yeah. it's all it's all worthwhile. I think speaking for all parents homeschooling at the moment. Uh, great 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 respect to all primary school teachers you know, big big shout out for all primary <laughs> school teachers come back to work quick <laughs> yeah come back to work please. <laughs> hey, mate. right well i'll let you go because i'm sure you've got loads of stuff to do this afternoon but i like i said yeah, i do appreciate you. having you on yeah, and uh, hopefully it'll be not the last time we talk mate i may see you around at some point nice talking cheers to you. take it easy mate bye-bye so that brings us to an end of episode 50 with my friend james rogers Links to all the things we discussed are in the podcast notes. You've been listening to Are You a Scuba Diver Fancy a Brew podcast with me, Andy the Northern Diver. You can find more scuba related content on my YouTube channel. The link is in the podcast notes. If you've enjoyed this episode, please consider subscribing and leaving us a five star review. And to become a patron of the podcast, visit www.patreon.com forward slash fancy a brew. There you'll be able to see the different levels of subscription and how to join the Fancy a Brew community. If there's someone or something you'd like us to discuss, please let us know via our Facebook page. Thanks for listening. See you on the next one.